Hi, so my name is Teresa, and uh, today I'm going to talk about humans and Elm, and specifically how they mix. Uh, but our story actually starts with React. So a while ago, I used to work on a project which was built in React and Redux, and it sort of looked like this. You know, you have the circles, and you pass down the state, and then when something happens, the state is like on top, and it changes, and then passes down, like super simple stuff. And uh, the thing that happened next is that I was under a tight deadline. And I started to do things that were like not that pretty, but <laughs> like you would like mute something or like you would talk, like communicate between components without going through the props. And I don't know, have you guys ever done that before? <laughs> um, and, but I was gonna fix it after the release, which is like fine, because this also like it was working, so it was all good. Uh, however, what happened was that the product was actually pretty success successful, and then after the release, more people were like applied to the team because to like accommodate for new demand for features, and there was in fact not really time to fix the dirty stuff. And what actually happened was that now that we were all these people, they were all exploring like their artistic potential in regards to architecture, <laughs> and. Um, I sort of, like at this point, I see the problem. And, uh, but I have this friend who's like telling me, like, you know, hi, Teresa, have you heard about Elm? It's a purely functional language for static typing, compiles to JavaScript, and so you can build like web applications with it, and it's like, has no runtime errors, and it's easily testable because of the functional paradigm. And I was like, it has the best practices of web development, it, like embedded into the language, so it creates like new, like, improved performance and readability, not only in your own code base, but like in the entire ecosystem. And has, oh yeah, and has enforced semantic versioning and like amazing error messages. But like, I'm busy at work. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what boy, you coming around here telling me about your new language. Well, you know what, I, don't, I got things to do today. So um, I know we have some problems, but we're solving it. And so uh, we keep solving it, but <laughs> the management really wants like new features and stuff. And so the moral on my team is like slowly declining because the developers don't get to do the beautiful code thing. And like every time they pick up a component, it just kind of crumbles in their hands and just leaves more bugs than before. And the management is also unhappy because they don't get the very important features. And then this is like obviously an unsustainable situation. And so I go talk to the management and like discussing the option for like doing a refactoring. And I'm pretending that there is a choice in the matter. <laughs> and it's like sort of an, an uncomfortable conversation because you have to admit that, you know, there was mistakes made because like Obviously, this is not what the React con like, code base is supposed to look like. Um, but yeah, after a like, long time of discussing this and insisting that we really need this refactor, uh, we get the time to do it. And we sort of like, go hand in hand for this like, jungle of regrets. Uh, <laughs> and um, sort of with the only comfort of knowing that you know, the darkest night is just before sunrise and it'll be okay eventually. And, it does, it gets better, like, it looks like this now, and it's like, it's cleaner. But it was a terrifying experience. And like, oh, a little too quick there, were we, Teresa? Um, there are some, some things break as well, and like, what essentially happened was that, like, we spent a lot of time being slow when the application was super complex, and then we spent a lot of time trying to fix it, and now we're spending a lot of time fixing our fixes. And like, we're like wildly behind on our features by now. And, um, and so we're like, this is, a, this is a bad experience and we would like to fix it. So we're like, okay, how do we fix it? Okay, we're just gonna learn all the best practices and become really good and like carry the word of Facebook in our hearts wherever we go <laughs> in the code base. It's gonna be great. Um, however, like, I look around myself and I'm like looking at other systems in our society which rely on like human discipline. 
and the results are often like disappointing <laughs> if you're just like a random example like nasa have you ever heard that story about they launched this rocket and then seven people died because it crashed and then richard Feynman, that physicist dude he was assigned to figure out what went wrong and what he discovered was not that they didn't have the resources or even the knowledge to prevent this accident it was just that the, like the safety criteria has just like slowly been declining over the course of like a few years and so this rocket should actually like never has been sent up it was just because humans are like just inherently bad at keeping up this discipline and criteria and like I realize that less people die when undefined is not a function, <laughs> but essentially we're dealing with the same problem. Uh, humans are, I think, just, they're the wrong tool for keeping up these criteria. And, um, and so when my friend comes around again, I'm like, and he's like, I tell him about what happened. And he's like, well, wouldn't that be cool if it never happened? And I'm like, yeah, I guess that would be kind of cool. <laughs> and so I take a look at Elm, and I'm like, what is with the commas? Uh, <laughs> and like the types are also a little like unfamiliar to me. I'm like, what's with the, like, so the expression is always the return value, and that's also like all this, all this new stuff. And like, what's with these like operators and things? Those are the ones that Nick's were actually talking about, which are, turns out to be pretty cool. But I'm more like focusing on what's with these elements being functions and like, where is my JSX, God damn it. <laughs> um, but like, eventually my eyes adjust even to the commas and I sort of get over it and I start to enjoy like the good parts of them which is like the error messages and how I can like find incoherencies in your logic and like hints to how you can fix it and stuff like that and track if you're missing error handling somewhere. And if you're coming from Redux, then like I am, then the architecture was actually quite familiar because Redux is inspired by Elm and it's basically like just a bunch of renaming going on. And like the only different, real difference being like that all the functions are now only pure. Like you can't have views which are not stateless. And it's like organized slightly different. So in Elm you would always keep the reducer and the view together if they're dealing with the same data structure. But like this just makes it like kind of easy to navigate around. The real difference though being that now the simplicity is like compulsory. And it means that whenever humans are dealing with Elm, like and like trying to mess it up for themselves, then computer just goes like, I'm sorry, Dave, I'm afraid I can't let you do that. <laughs> uh, and six months later, you still have like the same nice architecture and that's like neat. So that's like cool. Um, there's a but though, as always. There's like no service side rendering and I'm sorry, I couldn't find a better emoji to visualize that so now you're gonna have to deal with the space and beta um, and there's no way to like easily manipulate the DOM like make mutations to the DOM and like that's not gonna change so like if you have to do that a lot like don't use it um. <laughs> and it doesn't have like the same like huge ecosystem like reactors um, but there's some like pretty high quality packages on there though uh, but like, if you can do without this, it's like, it's pretty cool. And so at this point, I'm like pretty favorably disposed towards Elm, but I'm also sort of curious as to like what it's like to program like beyond the counter. <laughs> and uh, so I started working at Nord Inc., which is uh, like the biggest Elm code base in the world. We have over 100,000 lines of code in production. And uh, as Brent also mentioned, we also employ the guy who makes Elm, so that's convenient. Um, <laughs> and the way it works over there is that um, we used to have like an entire code base of React, but now we're like slowly porting it to Elm because you can, just saying. <laughs> um, but like, what's really cool about this that I like worked there for a while is that. 
this architecture, even though like it's been years now, it still looks the same. And the t feeling you have when you develop it is very different because you have like this confidence and because the compi you have the compiler to tell you if you're doing something wrong. And this shows in particular when uh, you do refactorings. So like this pull request is from when I just been at NeuroLink for like a month and like I was in this huge unfamiliar code base which was like 100,000 lines long and I was changing something that was like really central for the entire application and touching more than like 100 files. And I was completely calm doing that because like the compiler would tell me if I was messing something up. And so because it's really like comfortable to change the code because you always know if you break in something, you're allowed to do a lot of like experimentation. And this is just like the fun part of programming, you know? And like my point being that like you can do this in JavaScript, you have like TypeScript and you can have Redux if you use that and like React and then if you keep the containers from the views and you have the discipline to like not use any in TypeScript <laughs> and the discipline to like respect the architecture that you promised yourself at the beginning of the project that you would and did you have the memory to whenever you change something to make to remember oh is this changing something else in the application am I breaking something but if you can do that yeah then you have a maintainable project in JavaScript but like why even would you when you can do that you have the compiler to do that. And um, that just means that you can outsource all this to the compiler and then maintainability becomes like a given. And this is like, and the compiler is like way better at it than you are. In fact, like computers have perfect memory, so you don't have to. Like that's why we have computers partially, I guess. Um, and also it leaves like this bunch of time that you can do other stuff with, stuff that's like more relevant to like, or specific to the logic of your application. And so, which brings me to my last point, which is like the most important to me, is like what I do in my everyday is very different now that I work in Elm than it was that I worked in JavaScript. Because before I would think a lot about like, where does my state go? Should I just go to the store? Should I go to the local state? And like something would break and I'd be like, why is undefined not a function? <laughs> I would like, go somewhere new in the application and uh, like in the code base and I'll be like, what is even going on here? Because it could be anything. And now I spend my time thinking about, because these questions sort of like already solved in Elm. You can only do it one way in architecture wise. And so now I think more about like, how do I define a data structure which can accurately reflect the states that my application can be in? How do I split the application up in smaller modules which are more usable and like readable? And how do I create APIs with these modules which actually do not only make these data structures easy to work with but also like, like create APIs which you cannot misuse like if you're by accident. So if somebody else, put it another way, like how do I embed the most information into my APIs? So, and this is very important when working on a very large team or like in a large code base, because nobody can know everything. And so the code actually has to like, like present like everything you need to know about that piece of code. So if you hide a bunch of information in the module, so everybody who uses it don't have to know that information. And this is really great, I think, because I don't care why undefined is not a function, but I care about what makes a good API, and Elm gives me the tools and the time to do more of that and try to solve that problem. So if that sounds appealing to you, then maybe you should try it out. So like, thank you.